Well, hey guys, how we doing? So we're ready for another lesson. This is lesson number three of our unit. And the point of today's lesson is that prayer draws us closer to Jesus as our hearts align with his. The title of today's lesson is Intimacy with Jesus. So as we think about this question, be honest with yourself. How much time do you spend on your cell phone? And the question might be, would if you spend as much time with God in prayer as you did on your cell phone, what kind of relationship would you actually have with God? So as we look at our setting for today's lesson, we are going to be in John chapter 17. And we find that chapters 13 through 17 of John are kind of like the farewell discourses. It's kind of like jesus saying okay this is this is my final days this is the time leading up from before he was arrested you know his final days the upper room whenever he was up there and they had the last supper together so this was the final discourse is a farewell discourse they call it so as we get into these later verses chapter 17 of john we see that it's kind of drawing to a close Jesus' time on earth and the the redemption plan that God had set forth is coming to an end and Jesus spends a lot of time in prayer he 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 remains close to God and and again as we take notice and as we try to imitate and try to follow in Jesus' footsteps and his examples we notice that Jesus does a lot of prayer but again do we spend that much time in prayer so let's look at some of the things that Jesus prays for in this last, especially chapter 17. And we're going to begin in verse 1. It says, Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work that you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with glory which I had with you before the world was. So again, in these five verses, we see that this is, a, again, a prayer that Jesus has and of course anytime you talk to God it's a prayer and we see here that jo it says Jesus spoke these words and it says he lifted his eyes up to heaven and said father so we know he's praying to God he's praying to God the father so we know he's well he's speaking to God the father so we know he's in prayer as he does this so as we see you know what Jesus does in his example if we are to have that relationship that Jesus had with God we're going to have to spend more time with him. And not only in prayer, but we have to spend quality time in our prayer. In other words, don't just say the normal prayers. You know, don't just continue to say the same old thing. Hey, God bless this food, whatever. I've heard a prayer. God is good. God is great. So different prayers that people memorize. It's, it's good to teach your children to pray in this way. But eventually, as we want to get on with our relationship if we want to have that intimacy with god and jesus then we have to we have to kind of pray in a different way and the the words we say the things we say it and the depth in which we go they all have to change as we want to grow closer to god so and again as we find jesus in prayer we we find him and he's he's praying about the glorification of himself and to some extent, you might think, well, that, that seems almost haughty. It's like he's trying to lift himself up. But he has a specific purpose, and he wants to lift himself up. He wants God to lift him up, to glorify him, to glorify Jesus. And Jesus said, in doing so, that as I'm lifted up, he said, I'm going to lift you even higher. So Jesus' purpose and his reasoning for wanting to be glorified again is so that he would be lifted up he would be glorified and that god 
would be glorified even further through Jesus. So again, as we see that he says, I have finished the work that you have given me. Could you imagine if we knew exactly the work that God had for us? I believe that he could really reveal to us what it is he wants us to do if, if we had that relationship that Jesus had. And I think that we would have to spend prayer time, deep prayer time. And again, we, we can't spend too much time because we have to put them prayers into action. We have to read his word. We have to pray. Then we have to put the words and our prayers into action. So we have to mean our prayers. We have to make it every word count, so to speak. So whenever we pray to God that everything we say is for his glory, for his honor. But again, as we learn and as we grow and as he glorifies us, hopefully we would learn just like Jesus that as we are glorified, then we would glorify God. So as we get more mature in our walk with God, then I think that acts will, will almost come naturally. So we know that Jesus' work was, obviously he was to come to earth. He was born in a manger. And he grew up, even at the age of 12, he began to explain the scripture to the lawyers and the doctors in the temple. We know that he went on and he, as he started his ministry after the 40 days that he spent fasting in the desert and being tempted of the devil three times, that he started his ministry. And as he started his ministry, he walked blameless. And everywhere he went, he portrayed the love of God, not only the love of God, but the love of God through him. And that's where we, or we are to walk. You know, whenever we are you know, walking in God and we're showing others the love of God, that is God working through us so that we can bless and to love others through us. But it's coming from God. So we go on and says, you know, we don't really just want to pray just because we need something. We want to pray because we just need God. And that's very deep if you think about it, because a lot of times we go to God and God be with this person because they're sick, be with that person because they're sick. No, we just go to God because, God, I need you. I need you today. I need a touch. I'm feeling drained. I'm feeling weak. God, I just need you. And even when we're up, we should go to God because we still need him. God, I have such a wonderful day, and I was able to reach so many people and talk to so many people. God, continue to fill me, run my cup over so I can continue to bless others. So we see Jesus, and as he prays here, he's wanting to glorify God so that basically, you know, God would be glorified through Jesus. So again, as we look at... Um, what Jesus' prayer is, we see that it's so that he could be glorified so that God would be glorified through him. Our next set of verses, we're skipping down to verse 21. It says that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. So again, as we continue to see what it is Jesus is trying to say here, one of the things that we see here is he's praying for unity. You know, notice again that it said that he says, I and you and you and me. And that's really how he's wanting us to live our lives is that we basically live our lives in God. Just as Jesus lived in God and God lived in Jesus, we live in God so that God can live in and through us. You know, and a lot of people, they struggle with this thing called the trinity you know because you have god the father god the son god the holy spirit and they can't see how they come together and you know a lot of times people use the egg the example of the egg if i had an egg if i just held an egg up let's pretend this is an egg if i held it up this is whole and i said what is this 
just about anybody that you ask from you know a kindergartner on up would say well that's an egg so if i took that egg and i separated it out and i put the shell here then i separated the yolk so i put the yolk over here and then i put the whites right here now if i pointed to the one said what is this you'd say well, that's the shell I point to this one you'd say well that's the whites or the point to the other one you'd say well that's the yolk but again when i asked the question what what is this you said it was an egg just because they're separated doesn't mean they're individualized they are individual they are the egg shell the egg whites the egg yolk God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. But they together make that trinity just as the yolk, the white, and the eggshell make up a, an egg. So as we think about how they come together as one, they are still, you know, separate. The Father has his role, Jesus has his role, and the Spirit has his role. So... Really, you know, when we pray, we pray to God, but Jesus is really the one that takes um, that prayer to God. And then through the working of the Holy Spirit, that's how that prayer is answered. You know, it might not be the way we want it answered, but that's how it works. So whenever we pray, Jesus actually intercedes our prayer and he takes that prayer to God. And when we pray on others' behalf, that's known as an intercessory prayer. So we intercede on someone else's behalf, and we're taking that on to Jesus, to God, so that he would intercede on our behalf. But then again, the Holy Spirit is one that does the work. So they each have their own role, but they are still one, just as the egg was one until we looked at them individually then they had their own purpose so again as we think about that and as we think about the message that you know that Jesus is trying to portray he's portraying the message of unity and again he says you know we come together well Jesus don't say this but one of the main reasons we do come together as body believer you know we, they call it corporate worship you know, and again, this is kind of the way I see it, and I think it's the way it is. You know, we come together as a body of believers, and we come together because we do this in in reverence of God, because he says, "For not forsake not the assemblies of yourselves together. But we also come together in praise and worship in order to glorify God. So what is it Jesus said earlier? That lift up, glorify me, God, so that I could glorify God you so we glorify god so he can glorify us but in lifting us up we can glorify god even further so again as we have that unity that's the way we are be able to come together and that's the importance of coming together in one mind and of one accord as the bible says so we do this and as we come together and praise and worship then our 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 corporate worship is stronger because we've come together. I truly believe that. So as we actually start to meet again this coming Sunday, the 7th, we are coming together again to corporate worship. worship, And I just, I, I can't wait. I'm excited to see my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm excited to see you all again and, you know, to be able to hear the message without having to click on YouTube. I'm glad that we have this technology. I'm glad that you all listen. I'm glad that you are following. But again, I personally still like to be there in person. But we do what we have to do. And, and again, as we do the, the YouTube thing, I'm glad that you are following. Our last set of verses is verse 24. And it says, Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am that they may behold my glory, which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. And I declared to them your name, 
and I will declare it that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. So again, we're seeing that same message that he's saying, that, that message of unity. And not only that, he's going even further. He's saying that I'm hoping and what we're seeing is that this message, you know, and as we are able to witness and as we're able to lift God up and as we draw others, you know, that all that who comes, they also will be able to abide in God. And not only that, they may be able to feel the love of God, which Jesus felt the love of God. We also see that in the last set of verses. And he said, I, that you have sent me and have loved them as you, as you have loved me. So again, he's kind of talking about in the past when he, he was in heaven before he was sent to earth. You know, another thing that we think about, you know, Jesus' purpose, you know, we talk about that he finished the purpose in which he came to earth. Whenever he came to earth as a baby, he had to give up his glory. You know, God lives in glory. The angels glorify God and Jesus glorified God, but they also glorified Jesus in heaven. But as he came to earth, he had to give that glory up. And as he walked as a human, he still didn't have that glory. And here, it's almost like he's longing. He's wanting to finish up the work that God has set for him so he can go back to heaven and have that glory. You know, one of these days, we are going to be glorified. It's almost like the final process, the glorification and, and and I've seen Christians, you know, as they get older in life and as they know that their time on earth maybe is coming to an end or coming close, it's almost like they're longing for that desire, for that glorification process to take place. In other words, they want to go home. So as we think about, again, the message that Jesus is wanting us to understand through this lesson is that when we do pray, make sure our prayer means something. Not only that we go to God just because we go to God because it's prayer time. We go to God because we need Him. And we go to God because we want to come to Him on others' behalf. And we want to come to God because we want to feel the love of God that Jesus felt when He was in heaven with Him. And as He sits at the right hand of the Father with Him now, he feels the love of God, and, and he's being glorified as we speak. So again, as we see the lesson of unity, you know, as we come together in this corporate worship, let us make it count. You know, as we Even as we put it on YouTube, and maybe people are still not able to come, I just hope they could feel that presence of God through the message and through the you know, songs that are sung and through the glorification that we have of God in the videos. I hope that they can see that and feel that. You know, there's some that we can call them shut-ins, and I hope that they can feel the love that not only we have for God, but that we still have for them, because even though they're not with us, we still think about them, we still pray for them, and you know, hopefully when this comes to an end, we can start getting our youth back out, and start visiting, and start being able to witness again to be able to share the message of the gospel to extend the love of god again to our shut-ins the ones that can't come so again let's think about what jesus is praying here he's praying for unity and he's praying again for that glorification of god so as we think about that message let's let's put it into practice you know when you pray tonight or the next time you pray hopefully it'll be tonight um I hope that you pray with fervor. I hope that you pray as Jesus prayed, you know, almost with great drops of blood, it said, that whenever we pray that every single word has the most impact it could have, and then we could be able to glorify God through our prayer. We could come together in unity and through our corporate worship glorify God in order for him to glorify us that we may lift him even higher. It's almost like a building effect. As God glorifies us, we glorify Him. And as we continue to grow, He continues to glorify us. And we just continue to lift Him up. And one of the 
final verses that I'll say is that Jesus said that if I be lifted up, that I shall draw all men to him, basically to himself. So we need to lift God up. We need to lift Jesus up, glorify him. And the, the word glory literally means to lift up, you know, you know, basically to worship, you know, to praise. So as we worship and pray God, praise God, let's lift him up so that he can glorify us. Not that we could be, you know, emboldened or, you know, pat ourselves on the back that God has glorified us so that we could glorify God even on a greater level. Hey, I'm glad you joined. I hope that you, again, are well and happy. I hope everything's going good and the little bitty snows that we're having, I hope that you find them pretty and I hope that you're being safe. And again, as you're going to school, I hope that you're socially distancing, trying to keep yourselves safe, trying to do the things, washing your hands, not touching your face and your mouth the way, you know, they tell us not to do it. But I can't wait until again we're able to meet again. And hey, we'll see you guys next time. God bless.